Hello again, it's Ryan over at Summit Hydraulics. Today we're going to be doing a installation mock-up on one of our universal third function kits uh, rated at 15 gallons per minute. Again, we're gonna be using the tractor that was graciously donated to us for installation purposes from Southwest Equipment over in Morristown, Arizona. If you guys would like to check them out, if you need any tractors, trailers, implements, or anything of that sort, uh, give them a shout. Their information is in the link below. Um, but without further ado, let's address the universal third function kit, universal for uh, 15 gallons per minute. So because we are doing a more universal kit, we're not gonna do an actual full installation because it's going to be different for everybody's machine. Not all machines are gonna look the same. So I'm gonna go verbally on this and, and kind of explain the best we can in a more general way how this would go. What we're gonna wanna do first is find a really good mounting spot for the valve itself. This is gonna be, like I said, different for everybody's machine. But on this particular machine, I did locate a couple of good bolts right here on the frame itself where the loader gets connected to. You're gonna to wanna to identify something that is on the frame of the machine and not the loader because if you ever do go to disconnect your loader, you'll want your valve to stay with your machine and just disconnect the hoses and then the hoses will go with the loader, the valve will stay with the machine. Um, in this case, like I said, we'll use these two bolts here. You get a very generic mounting plate. doesn't have any holes drilled in it. In this case, we would want to drill a couple holes, you know, right here on the bracket itself to be able to accept these two bolts here. We could reuse this hardware. You just disconnect those bolts and you can mount this valve right in this area here. And this would be a good place keeping it out of the way, you know, from any debris getting kicked up from the machine, uh, protecting the valve, facing towards the inside of the frame, which would be better as well. And then at this point, once you have your valve mounted, you could move on to running your work lines and your pressure and your tank lines. Now, because this is more of a generic kit, we'll just kind of get into some basics of a loader valve. Your loader valve will always have a Power Beyond port connected to it. In the case that you have a backhoe Power Beyond loop or rear remotes, you would need to identify the line that is connected to that Power Beyond port and remove that. So one side will be connected to your loader valve and then there would be either a hard line or a hose. The opposite side of that would be connected at your rear remotes, your three point or your power beyond loop that would a backhoe would typically connect to. So that line would get removed completely. You would then run a hose from the power beyond port on your loader valve to the P port on the summit valve. That's gonna feed high pressure into the valve. Then out of the T port on your summit valve, you would return back to the rear of the machine where that line was connected, which is gonna feed high pressure downstream from the summit valve and continue the power beyond pressure back to the rear for a power beyond loop, rear remotes, three point hitch, etc. In the case that you do not have any rear hydraulics, at that point, you will not need to worry about returning the tank. And in this case, your loader valve is not going to have a hose or anything connected to it from the power beyond port that port will be plugged on your loader valve. So you would remove that plug, run a hose from the P port on the summit valve to the power beyond port on the loader valve. And then at the tank return, you're just gonna return that right back to tank. And you can easily do that by using a T adapter and teeing into any existing return line that is currently on the machine. So that's just kind of the basic rundown of the plumbing on how this valve works. Another question you might have is, is there a power beyond port on this control valve? The answer to that is no. There is a T port on this valve that stands for tank, but in our case, it can be used as a power beyond. So there is always high pressure returning out of the tank port on this valve. And the T port doubles as the power beyond port. So if you do have rear hydraulics, you can use the T-port as a power beyond and feed those rear hydraulics. If not, you just run a hose right out of the T-port and just return it back to tank.
Again, because it is a more universal kit, you don't necessarily have to have this bracket in this position. You can move this bracket anywhere along this torsion bar that might be convenient for you in the middle, the left or the right. Um, in this case, we'll have it to the right hand side. You do get a couple of hose clamps that are provided in the kit that is used to fasten this quick coupler bracket to the torsion bar. Basically, you'll choose your spot wherever you're comfortable having this bracket, undo these clamps, clamp on each side of this bracket, we'll fasten it to the torsion bar. Once you do that, you're ready to go and start plumbing your lines. So uh, you would run two hoses for each work line, running to, we'll say, a grapple. And then these two hoses would connect to the A and B work ports on the summit uh, control valve. At that point, we've already addressed the tank return and the pressure from the power beyond. So in this case, once you have this, this mounted here, you have your valve mounted on the frame over by the loader arm itself. You've got your pressure, your return line plumbed in. You have your two AB work lines plumbed in. Uh, you have your bracket fastened. And at that point, you would move on to the electrical side and install the joystick. All right, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and crimp our eyelids onto our wire for the joystick. We'll go ahead and set the eyelid directly onto the wire. Use our crimping tool here. Go ahead and crimp this right on to the wire. Do the same thing for the positive, as well as the red and the black wire for both switches. And we will wire these directly to the battery. Now we're going to remove this joystick handle so we can install the Summit Hydraulics two button joystick. So these joysticks come with several different bushings to fit on several different size of rods. Uh, you can see here I'm removing this first bushing with a set of needle nose pliers. Remove that and that will give us enough room to install this joystick onto this lever. At that point, we can reinsert our fastener screws, tighten them down with the Allen wrench, and this joystick will be solid, fastened directly to this lever. When you're operating a grapple with a joystick like this, uh, one of these switches would open the grapple, the other one would close the grapple. These can be used either way. Either one can open or close the grapple, depending on how you have the switch connected to the control valve, uh, where the solenoid connectors are. Another way you can switch the operation of this is to switch the work lines around, and you, that would enable you to switch to whatever function you prefer in which switch is going to open and close the grapple. In conclusion, the Universal Third Function Kit is a great way to add additional circuits or functions to your machine without interrupting anything else. You know, if you have any questions, please uh, take a look at our blog. We have uh, some great information there. You can also reach us on our website and chat with a live chat specialist. Mm -hmm.